Hi, everybody. Oh, this is loud. <laughs> Uh, my name is Eric Wall, and I'm the uh, director of MCLA Arts and Culture, which is otherwise known as MAC. And it's my pleasure to have you here with us tonight for the closing lecture by our current art laboratory resident, which is Joshua A.M. Ross. Hopefully you were here for his opening lecture in the fall. Um, this is... Uh, a little bit about his experience during his residency, talking about the body of work that he created, some reflections about the residency, but also to introduce the ideas that help to create what culminates his residency, which is his exhibition on Friday um, that opens at Gallery 51, and I hope you'll be able to join us from five to seven for that as well. Um, this is, you know, as I've said to many people, uh, these residencies, when uh, an artist comes and goes, it happens very quickly, but it's very bittersweet to see them go. Um, I've really enjoyed having Joshua here, but I know that um, he'll come back to visit us often, and hopefully you as students and part of the campus community at some point have had a chance to interact with him. I'll just briefly um, tell you a little bit about Joshua and uh, go over his uh, his bio and after he gives this talk um, hopefully there'll be time for questions if you have those and um, Joshua can answer those but possibly Josh and I will talk a little bit too about his time here uh, Joshua A.M. Ross holds an MFA from MFA in art from the University of California in Irvine and also a BFA in photography from Heron School of Art in Indianapolis Ross's research baked Based practice is entrenched in phenomenological approach in a phenomenological. You do that every single time. This word, Joshua, phenomenological approach that investigates institutional, bodily, and spatial structures that organize and influence perception. Ross's multidisciplinary practice employs and appropriates a variety of material and media developed through relationships to methodologies inherently related to his research and archival experiences of photography. Some recent notable exhibits for Ross is being featured in the Los Angeles Municipal Art Gallery, Queens, LA, and Human Resources, also in Los Angeles. So join me in welcoming Joshua A.M. Ross. Well, thank you, Erica, and hello, everyone. Um, it's nice to sort of be here and talk to you all about the residency and my artwork tonight. Um, happy Lunar New Year. Um, and, um, you know, welcome Black History Month. Um, and, um, yeah, thank you, MCLA and the students, the faculty for hosting me for this um, period that I've made artwork. Um, yeah, tonight, just to orient us in some of the slides that I'm gonna share with you all, um, um, I'm gonna reflect on sort of projects that sort of informed the questions that, um, or that I'm gonna talk about sort of projects that help develop some of the questions that are kind of central in this solo exhibition um, that took place um, prior to being here. And, um, and then I'll sort of share with everyone some of the sort of specific stimulus that I responded to while being here in North Adams. Um, yeah, so the, the gallery um, exhibition um, is titled Come Inside. Um, and this is the exterior of the gallery. Um, it'll be a few images that, I'll show only a few images for works that'll be on view um, this week. Um, um, can you hear me? Can you hear me fine? Okay. Um, I'm starting with um, a piece of material, a, a print that, um, that was made in the year 2019, um, a part of a collaboration. Um, and the reason I'm starting here is because this print um, 
was made after being invited to show in a public sort of venue in Los Angeles called AMAS Gallery. That gallery is no longer here. It like was it there was an explosion <laughs> um, that happened in the year 2020 that kind of like was the end of that gallery. I can't help but think about that. Um, but this print, once being invited to show work at that space, me and my current, my collaborator at that time had decided that we didn't want to make an actual sort of artwork, but we wanted to make something that could be a takeaway for people to come into a collaboration that was happening in an interior space that we were living in together and sort of developing artworks. Um, so this print is 11 by 14. Um, and it was, the illustration was sort of co-created. You know, we both were drawing um, elements that um, are a part of this image. And also, um, we both sort of participated in laying the prints. Um, it's a limited edition print. Um, this one is actually number 14 of 27. Um, um, this is, um, this is, the place or the platform that we sort of developed images um, at. So, and this this is also where I met Erica. So I met Erica at the beginning of a project that was about sort of creating objects in the space, um, and then having people come in and um, participate in the making of those in the realization of those objects and the meaning of what they were. Um, so in this picture, you see like the exterior of this sort of square, sort of angular space. And you see the, the light that was sort of showing or, you know, kind of lived in. But there were so many different objects that were made um, in the interior of this space. I think it's also really interesting thinking about this image in relationship to the way you'll experience color um, through sort of different shape works in the show that's on view. Um, this is, I'm going to show a few images. Uh, this was actually existing within the interior space of that environment. Um, and so there are curtains that were made out of paintings that were sort of developed to exist as sort of a set. So a diff the, this image has different functionality um, because it's an image that captures sort of these objects that were made and to, to sort of be in relationship to other objects. I'll like elaborate with that, what I'm saying there um, as I continue. Um, so here is an actual photograph um, where, uh, and it's titled Julian Diablo Diaz. It's a dig digital inkjet print, and it's very small. It's like eight inches by five inches. Um, and, um, and then here is an image that's very dark and it's actually titled Kitchen Table. And I wanted you all to see those three images before like elaborating. Um, but what was really important is how these different objects sort of perform. And so like this image actually exists as a set backdrop. And so like all of those images that were made to kind of exist within this object, um, would kind of rotate and sort of have a different relationship, which would sort of shift the meaning and information that was important about the object. Um, and so, um, oh, well, Julian Diablo Diaz, also the title of this image is the part of this sort of elaborate fictional sort of narrative that me and the collaborator made together, uh, <laughs> where all of these objects had a role. And so they're also kind of actors or agents um, on their own. Um, so a little bit out of that project and kind of fast forwarding um, a few years um, 
through at the time that I've been in residency here, um, I had a two-person show in Los Angeles where I um, was invited by the gallery that's an artist-run space to invite another artist to be in dialogue with. Um, and so I invited an artist named um, Chester Vincent Toy. And so from the, from the, we really kind of joined forces to kind of realize an exhibition together. Um, so this was a coaster. So we had limited edition coasters <laughs> available for um, people who were able to visit. Um, so this is the exterior of After Hours, um, the artist run space that I mentioned. And this artwork that kind of um, introduces the space is um, titled Left Hand. And in the photograph that's been mounted to the wall, you see like this painting gesture in the process of happening. And you also see like this splattering of the uh, paint. Um, so it's, a, it's inkjet print, 21.5 by 17.5. And it was made in 2019, uh, two years before it showed. And here is the interior of that space. Um, and it's very dark in the space, and so you can't see it. But, some, um, but there's a photograph to the left side that has a tattoo that's uh, by, my, uh, by the artist I invited. Um, that's titled Yes I Know, which is the title of the, um, of the work, but it's also the tattoos, sort of, that it's what the tattoo is. And you see it when it's swelling, and so it's this reddish color. And, um, and then there's a video projection, Chester is not here, video with sound, uh, five minutes and zero seconds. And then there's kitchen set to the right hand side. And um, the reason I'm showing these, this artwork is because of the way that the works operated in relationship to each other, but also the environment. Um, and what's lost here is a lot of the kind of physicality of that experience. So when you're in that space, it's actually really small. And there's a way that you're kind of compelled or brought into the objects, um, whether that's due to the size of them or to the kind of orientation to the projection or with the image on the right hand side which is kitchen set um, because of the darkness and so with kitchen set um, to kind of talk a little bit more about this image and how it's functioning in this space in this original in the image there were two curtains um, that were blocking out light and so it was vital to this installation to actually perform as an object what the image captured, which was blocking out light. And so the light cast is able to become visible um, in the installation. Um, and if anyone has questions about like this work and why I'm showing it later, I'm happy to clarify. Um, so kind of fast forward to, like, to what the work is that I'm making now. So. I showed you two projects where I was looking at interior spaces in different ways. And one, it was a brief introduction to like a three-year long, three long project where we were making objects in a space for people to come into physical contact with in that environment. And then this recent sort of realization of me and a person, another artist, work in dialogue in an interior space that require some level of participation from the viewer. And then um, this was the work, that, this work that actually kind of builds out an interior space um, within the image plane that you're looking at. Um, it's kind of what I was working on prior to coming into the residency. Um, so this is a color pencil drawing. It's 66 inches by 42 inches, and it's from 2021. Um, and, um, and in residence, I made sort of colored pencil and graphite drawings. Um, so, um, 
So this is, when I, this is not my work. This is a piece by Nancy Grossman that was on view in the Williams College Museum. Um, I'm switching gears too, so excuse me. But I'm, I'm, I'm showing this work because when I arrived here, I was kind of getting my grips by like visiting all of like the local places. And, um, and I was also kind of conceptualizing the project that I was working on here. Um, and at that point, I kind of came in contact with this piece by Nancy Grossman. And it, I was really struck, um, struck by the kind of orientation of the figure, but also um, the, um, just the, yeah, I mean, I guess the orientation and the posture. And I was also very interested in how, when you actually visibly see this work, um, how it's all flattened, but it's, it's a sort of, it's a, it's a like composite of materials, like they are actually sort of layered, but then flattened. And so it really, it really struck a strong chord for me. And, and I was, and also the crop. So I was really moved by the way that like Nancy chose to crop this figure. Um, and I was thinking about like how, you know, what questions are different but, but that can be asked in relationship to like um, the orientation of sort of a person to like an artwork that I'm making while in residence and like how can I kind of challenge myself to work with these different, um, without this full image plane, which is what I was doing previously. Um, so I think it informed some of the images that you'll see later. Um, just to, in case someone can't see or something, um, Nancy was born in New York, New York in 1940, and this piece was made in 1973. Um, and it's a collage. Um, so then fast forward <laughs> to kind of some more of my experiences here. Um, you know, I was previously in Los Angeles and LA is pretty, it's a pretty mild sort of climate transition there. And so usually it's sunny and it's blue skies. And, you know, I, I lived in that for six years. And so, um, so one thing I was really sort of fascinated at, and I think also informs some of the sort of choices or unconsciously that uh, appear in the artwork is the way that the climate changed. And so um, when I arrived, it was really green and lush. And um, so, and I, I took this snapshot while driving to Pittsfield um, in um, September 7th, 2021 at 106. <laughs> um, and this is a picture of some of the staghorn sumac, sumac um, that is, um, it's a weed kind of that, you know, I took a picture of when sort of summer was transitioning into fall. Um, and um, this is a photo on October 28th um, when I'm driving to Boston um, at 9.08 in the morning. Um, and then this is me driving to Boston at like 9.23 in the morning. And um, I think that there was like, um, I'm interested in how like I'm kind of transiting through space and like kind of really trying to, I think that that occurs in the work too. I think like how you move through time or space. Um, and I think it is, it's, it's a very, very important aspect to like my time being in residence here. Um, um, this is in the Walmart parking lot on December 14th, uh, 2021, uh, <laughs> sorry, 2021. Um, but um, I think I was getting like Christmas gift cards, but uh, I was really struck by how like when I came, you know, there was like all this greenery. And at this point there's like just this kind of, you know, emptiness in the landscape. And um, that definitely like informed um, some of the work um, that I'm like some of the some of the qualities in the work that I made. Um, 
I think I'm getting close to the end of <laughs> my picture sharing. Um, this is one of my visits to the Clark. Um, I was looking at James Vanderzee. He's a, a photographer, books, um, and he's a photographer who was doing sort of family portraits in the studio. Um, and he's someone who I'm, I'm interested in how he utilizes sets or, so that's just a, a kind of tangential thought. Um, driving to Albany, <laughs> undisclosed date. This is uh, me and my apprentice. Um, he um, really assisted with like producing like the artworks like by cutting out paper. So that was a really crucial sort of, I mean, the works, that step in the process of making artworks is really vital and it's really, it's really time consuming. And a lot of questions, I, the more sort of I can shift between seeing sort of the scale of an artwork and like sort of moving, like, and being able to dis make a decision more rapidly with the information I need to make the decision. Um, that um, it just has a real, it had a real strong impact on my ability to produce 12 drawings, <laughs> like, and know what size they needed to be. Um, and then this is um, SAC. This, oops, oh, my bad. <laughs> so this is SAC. This is, um, this is uh, one of the drawings that's going to be in the show. Um, it's uh, colored pencil and graphite. Um, it's 25 inches by 19. And uh, I made that earlier in the residency. Um, so in the residency, there'll be 12 drawings. Um, um, and I think that the, your physical relationship to them is really an important quality that if you that you'll witness if you're able to come to the show on Friday um, between 5 and 7 p.m. Thank y'all for coming. Thank you. <laughs>